a special meeting of the Orange County Legislature, excuse me, for the purpose of entering into an executive session pursuant to the Open Meetings Law, Section 105.1D, for discussions with Legislative Council and the County Attorney on the potential for litigation regarding the environmental review and curious Joel annexation. We'll entertain a motion. Discussion? Yes, Mike. Now you stop us. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, all the citizens. Thank you to all the citizens that are out here today. This is a critical meeting. We're about to go into executive session. I want to point out um, that this is a debatable motion that has to have a vote. Just because we are asked to go into executive session doesn't mean we have to. Um, public officers law, open meetings law, Article 7, Section 105 says that the public body may conduct an executive session for the reasons that are listed below. And uh, Section 105.2 says, attendance at executive session shall be permitted to any member of the public body, that's us, the legislature, and any other persons authorized by the pu public body, that be non-elected officials that are authorized to go in there. Point is, just because we're asked to have an executive session doesn't mean we have to have it. We're going into executive session today to hear from the lawyers on the possibility of a lawsuit. We're not going to hear any kind of uh, details on people's finances or medical histories, any kind of personal information, any kind of confidential information. These people that are here today have been kept out of good government for 20 months. Their government won't let them hear what goes on. Their government won't convene in front of them. Their government calls meetings without letting them know about it. Their government takes votes on, on things that are potentially illegal. I want everyone to know exactly... everyone to know exactly what we are being told about litigation so everybody is on the same playing field so everybody knows exactly what is going on we shouldn't be keeping things secret at this critical moment for Orange County's history we should be having everything out in the open and simply having a discussion with attorneys to advise us of the potential for lawsuits no details about lawsuits are going to be talked about here nothing confidential and secret I would hope every single member on this legislature will vote no to go to executive session and vote yes to have everything open to the public. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any other discussion on the motion to go to executive session? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Few, just a few comments uh, relative to what uh, my colleague just stated. I intend uh, in executive session to find out what our strategy is. And I think that it's important that any strategy discussion be held in executive session at this point in time so that it's heard by us and us alone. We can release information after that uh, executive session is held. And uh, at that time, that information can be made public. Thank you. Any further discussion? Roll call. Yes is, is to go in executive. No is not to go in executive. Bonasek? Yes. Ekis? Yes. Amo? Anagnostakis? No. Benton? Yes. Berkman? Benelli? Yes. Berkman present? No. Benelli? Yes. Yeah. Feeney? Yes. Dillard? Yes. DeSalvo? Yes. Paggio? Hines, yes. Chemnitz, no. Ulasek, no. Paduk, no. Miskevich, yes. Sullivan, no. Turnbull, no. Bureau, yes. Wong, <laughs> Gresha, yes. 13 ayes, 5 noes, 1 abstention, 2 absent. Okay, we will uh, go to meeting room 1 for executive session. We'll reconvene in this room probably over an hour hence.
Okay, because of the high holy day, Rosh Hashanah, which continues into the night, and we are minus one legislator because of that, uh, we're going to take public comment tonight, three minutes, which is what we allow, and we're going to recess until Thursday at four o'clock and reconvene here for more public comment and uh, possibly a vote subsequent to that. So we have, I don't know how many speakers signed up. Uh, three minute time period. Sure. <clears throat> Uh, yes, preferably public officials first, but now I don't think it, how many speakers do we have signed up? It doesn't, yeah, it's not unreasonable, so. Uh, you want to take roll call? Monasek? Here. Ikis? Here. Amo? Here. Anagnostakis? Here. Benton? Here. Berkman? Benelli? Here. Cheney? Here. Dillard? Here. DeSalvo? Fagione? Here. Hines? Here. Chemnitz? Here. Kulsek? Paduk? Here. Ruskevich? Here. Sullivan? Here. Turnbull? Here. Bureau? Here. Wong? Here. Brescia. 20 present, one absent. Okay, and if you speak tonight, uh, we'll be having different speakers on Thursday. It will be a continuation of the same meeting. So. First speaker is Dan Castricone, tuxedo, regarding KJ. <coughs> you had to leave? Okay. Well, let him know that the meeting will be Thursday if he wants to come speak, okay? Uh, Mayor of Harriman, Steve Welly, regarding KJ. Thank you, Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to uh, speak before you tonight. Uh, with all due respect, I and other municipal leaders from Southeast Orange County believe that County Attorney Langdon Chapman should have recused himself from all matters regarding the KJ annexation at the onset <laughs> at the onset of the proposed annexation. Mr. Chapman was the Monroe Town Board Attorney for several years prior to being named County Attorney by County Executive Newhouse. Mr. Chapman was previously hired by the Monroe Town Supervisor and Councilman and they are elected by the village of Curious Joel Blockboat. Mr. Chapman also spent the majority of Election Day 2013 at the Curious Joel voting locations, monitoring the election and questioning poll watchers, even though this is a function of the Board of Elections. I believe that there is sufficient evidence to conclude that Mr. Chapman has a definite conflict of interest and should immediately recuse himself and the entire county attorney's office from any future involvement in the Curious Joel annexation proceedings. Anything less will result in a lack of credibility regarding any actions Orange County takes regarding this annexation. I do believe, though, that the county legislature should authorize litigation without Mr. Chapman's involvement. As County Executive Newhouse has stated several times, and I wholeheartedly agree with him, this annexation is not in the public interest. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you, Steve, for uh, calling this special meeting regarding the annexation petition from KJ. And also, I want to thank the legislature for uh, funding the, the study, the parallel study for uh, the KJ annexation. My chief concern is water. We supply water for not just the village of Cornwall and Hudson, but also for the town of Cornwall. And we have plans to expand our system in the future. The well that has been proposed on the Cornwall Woodbury border would probably dry up the wells that are there now and uh, take, not help us in terms of our plans for the future. I believe that you should take action on this. You should litigate. This is a county issue. It's not a Monroe issue. It's not a Woodbury issue. It involves the entire county. You have a park in the 507 annexation area, and um, you have a major concern in terms of the Harriman sewer plan. So I urge you, I'm one of um, a number of municipal leaders who have gotten together in uh, the southern part of the county to, to go forward with an, an annexation uh, litigation, and, and I hope you'll do so as well. Thank you.
Good evening. First, thank you, Majority Leader, for holding this special meeting of the legislature. Chairman. Chairman, I apologize. <laughs> I called her Minority Leader before. So. <laughs> Laws are predicated in this nation on what is right. What seems right usually coincides with what is legal. Imagine for a moment that the Monroe citizens outside of KJ woke up tomorrow, decided to have extremely large families, and began in insisting that these children live in close proximity to their parents when they're grown, and that when the Monroe citizens quickly ran out of space, we Monroeans simply began to grab land from Chester, Blooming Grove, Tuxedo, and Woodbury. The surrounding communities would be outraged, and it would be understandable, and it would just seem wrong. Now add to this equation the defense for these actions being based on religious doctrine. Now we've crossed over into major constitutional territory. The idea that someone's religion can be the defense for such an action is frankly indefensible. It feels wrong. When something feels wrong, it's usually illegal. This land grab, whose only defense is cultural religious in nature, and whose perpetrators go so far as to constantly attack those of us who are justifiably opposed by calling us bigots and anti-Semitic must be stopped. This matter must be brought to the courts, and our leaders must stand up and vocally oppose this behavior and call it what it is, an attempt to change the subject and deflect attention from the misdeeds of the KJ leadership, and we must all be outraged. I'm not a historian or even a history buff, but I've read enough of our Constitution and the writings of our Founding Fathers to know that they'd be outraged to see what Cuomo is doing, what the Monroe Town Board is doing, and what the KJ government is doing. <laughs> you legislators before me have an opportunity to stand up and do what is right, what feels right and what is legal, to litigate against this land grab effort. Others here today will speak about the reports which all point to the same direction, that the EIS is a sham, that the petitions are invalid. I stood before you several months back when you voted by overwhelming majority to authorize a parallel review. I asked you then to only vote yes if the full build-out potential of the 507 acres would be truly and honestly studied. The full build-out potential was not studied. Migration was not factored into the study. We know there would be mass migration should high-density apartments be immediately built. Now we have eight municipalities resolved to take legal action using outside counsel. The county can and should join these municipalities. This would erase any doubt among the people of Orange County that the county attorney is not involved. Monroe has a history with the county attorney and requests that he not be involved whatsoever with the annexation litigation. I understand that some of you have fiscal concerns about litigation. I assure you, we cannot afford not to take legal action. Please vote yes in favor of joining the eight municipalities and hiring outside counsel to litigate against this annexation, which is so undoubtedly not in the overall public interest. Thank you so very much for your time and consideration of this life-affecting, monumental issue facing our county. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the legislature. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. If one municipality and all municipalities are supposed to follow the rules and regulations, are to follow comprehensive plans, then everybody should. It doesn't work that way in the village of Curious Joel. And it isn't something that just happened with this annexation proposal. It's been going on for years and years. And it's been let slide. Uh, permission has been granted. Oh, well, go ahead. And it's, uh, it's a land grab, as Emily said. It's a land grab. But guess what's in back of it? Votes. Let's be honest here. That block vote is people genuflect for the block vote. But you know something? The block outside of the village of Curious Joel 
is much larger. And people have to stop complaining about the elected officials that uh, kowtow, if you will, and accept huge contributions, political contributions, and they have to start voting in the best interests of their communities. And they have to start getting elected officials in who will stand up and do the right thing by everybody. If Greenville has to do it, the village of Curious Joel has to do it. There aren't that many votes in Greenville, but there are in KJ. It's got to stop. And you have the power. You have the opportunity to put up this roadblock. This, I, I have no idea where the state fell off the bridge because the DEC certainly, certainly could have included as co-lead agencies uh, the, uh, the school district, the county, and uh, you know, it was left, and they were left out, you were left out, and it's time to stop it. What's good for the goose is good for the gander too. Hire the lawyers, get into court, and God bless you will be in the court to help support you and win. Thank you. Regarding the annexation vote. Yes, please. Thank you for your time. I usually don't speak like this. Uh, thank you for your time. I usually don't speak like this in front of fine uh, people, but I'll be short and sweet. Um, the fact of the matter is this, uh, from Florida to Washington State, from Maine to Southern California, Curry's Jewel is the poorest town in America. They rely heavily on social services. It's a drain to the county, and if you let them expand, it's gonna be more of a drain. Why would the poorest town in all of the United States of America need more land? I don't understand that. And if you let them expand, for decades on, it happened on your watch. And it's going to affect the social services of this county, something terrible. It's going to have a domino effect that nothing positive would come out of it. Nothing. The quality of life is a very important thing now. The quality of life will go down. Instead of having green grass, we're going to have cement and parking lots. Thank you. Hi. Anyway, first of all, I want to say thank you, Mike and Agastakis, for uh, trying to do and have open government here in Orange County. You've been fighting for this a really long time on many, many issues. And I just want to tell you, and I'm sure you know it better than anybody, it's a freaking uphill battle. Um, Orange County has historically had uh, private meetings and secret deals. And uh, what I'm seeing today is uh, that's unfortunately uh, continuing. Uh, that being said, my reason here today is not to uh, be for the annexation or against the annexation. I'm here to make sure that this legislative body doesn't jump the gun and uh, jump into something just because the heat is on. Um, what happened is before is that you spent, you know, all the time, keep in mind I'm a big Valley View supporter, you guys wanted to sell Valley View, et cetera, et cetera. And that troubles me because there's always all these financial problems, blah, blah, blah. But you have no problem throwing money out. And in fact, you threw $200,000 to a study that you knew would not have any effect. And my concern, again, is that you're going to throw another 250000 and do you have standing in a lawsuit? And who have you been advised by? I keep hearing, you know, right now, Langvin Chapman is your advisor. Is he telling you, yes, a lawsuit is, is good to go with or not? And my concern is that it, if what I understand about zoning and whatnot is that if you have in New York State home rule, how can the county fighting a lawsuit 
have any effect. The town of Monroe and the village of Curious Joel have the right to home rule. And unless you can tell me that there's some other basis for this lawsuit, and that's why I'm hoping and was hoping that we could hear it in a public forum rather than you be behind closed doors, I just want to make sure the county doesn't throw away another $250,000 and then cry poor mouth on January 1st and tell us we have to sell the nursing home and we have to do all these other things to save this priceless money and yet we have money to throw out when maybe we don't know what we're doing with this lawsuit. I want you to sit back. I'm very glad that the decision is delayed until Thursday because I think you need to do some research before all of a sudden you jump the gun with $250,000 more. Thank you. The first Pollock, Monroe, annexation litigation. The Pollock? Hi. Hi, and thank you for uh, hearing me. I just want to reiterate what everyone else is saying here to the point of I believe the county should get involved in fighting this annexation petition. I believe they should join the eight municipalities and other organizations that believe this is not in the best interest of our county. And I think that the money that it that would cost to fight it is a small amount to pay because in the long run, it'll be a whole lot more. And I'm just hoping that, uh, you know, if we all put our, our forces together, that we can fight against this, because let, let's say this goes through and we don't, you know, fight it. What's gonna happen next? 507, what's going to happen with, uh, with annexation petitions in the surrounding areas. It'll just keep going and going and going. And it has to stop here, in my opinion. But thank you. Thank you. Steve Brander, Vega. Russia, thank you, legislators. Uh, it seems that uh, we're now going to have this vote later in the week. So I'd like to say that uh, since we'll be deciding whether to authorize funds to pursue litigation in conjunction with eight other Orange County municipalities, in an attempt to stop the annexation of 164 acres of land from the town of Monroe into the village of Curious Joel, I'm sure you know by now the overwhelming number of experts and elected officials who have concluded that Number one, the impact, environmental impact statement put forth by Curious Joel is fatally flawed. And number two, the proposed annexation is not in the overall best interest of the county that you, as legislators, serve. As a resident of the county, I've seen many changes, but none contains as much long-term threat as does the notion that the expansion of one community, a community with a long history of being self-serving to the detriment of its neighbors is unstoppable. So I urge you to vote. I urge you to authorize this important litigation. I understand what Marianne McDonough said with regard to wasteful spending of taxpayer dollars. That's why I was here with regard to the government center on many times. But this time is a little bit different. This goes beyond Monroe and Woodbury. It even goes beyond Orange County. This government must not fail in its responsibility. This annexation attempt is not a local issue. It's countywide, it's regional. In addition, the complexity of this issue has resulted in a lack of enforcement at all levels, local, county, and state government. Please vote in favor of this action. Do not repeat the mistakes of other legislative bodies. Speak out for your constituents. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it looks like Janet Madella. Correct me when you come up if I'm wrong. Monroe, New York, regarding uh, the whole issue tonight we're just talking about. Okay. 
Can you hear me all right? Oh. I used to live in Muncie. I can attest to the fact. I can attest to the fact this is a, a block vote that is politically and financially will outgun any community they come into. It's unstoppable. There are many sources that value the Rabbi Teitelbaum's dynasty at $1 billion. There is not, by all visual appearances, any poverty in Curious Joel. They are a community with sidewalks, streetlights, cameras, whatever they want, they get. What's happening is these communities, these Hasidic enclaves, steamroll over another community. They come in, even up in Bloomingburg, a small community of 400 people, and they steamrolled over them. And we, we have no recourse. There is no municipality that can keep up with the lawsuits, the expense of it. So if there is no legislation to protect communities, they will own everything. They are driving people out. The entire demographic in Muncie has completely changed, completely. We, the energy, the stores, everything, it doesn't uh, pay for anybody to live there. You're asking, or they are asking, one segment of a community to pay for them. They had, uh, I think from 1987 to 2010, until somebody noticed it over in the town of Monroe, buildings worth $52 million off the tax rolls. In one blog, and it's really interesting to read the blog on some of these Jewish newspapers, one blogger said, 95% of the homes in my neighborhood are off the tax rolls. We love it here. Now, what is a, the other segment of a community to do? They want more land from Monroe. With that land goes revenue. We have to make it up. We are, unless there is legislation to stop this, we really need to do something because we are losing towns and counties all over New York State. This is an unprecedented issue before us. We have to come up with unprecedented remedies for it. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. I'd like to thank the County Executive, Chairman Brescia, for calling this special meeting, and I'd like to thank the overwhelming majority of you, the legislature, for in advance for objectively analyzing uh, this hugely important issue on behalf of all 375,000 plus residents of Orange County. I moved here eight years ago, admittedly pretty naive as to the role special interest played in state and local government, in some localities more so than others. But in those eight years, I've learned quite a bit. Uh, in particular, I've learned a lot about tolerance, and for that matter, intolerance. Not the kind of religious intolerance that we hear so much about in regard to this issue that has no real basis, in fact. I'm talking about a demonstrated intolerance for transparency and openness in government. Intolerance for specifics and details, intolerance for objectivity and facts. On the flip side, I've seen a disturbing level, level of tolerance for these behaviors on a state and local level, but I'm hopeful enough awareness has been spread and concern raised that we can make this a different place in time moving forward. This legislature recently voted 20 to 1 to appropriate $200,000 in order to objectively and fairly address whether annexation is in the county's overall public interest. As we know, the study decidedly concluded for a dozen separate reasons that it is not. So these are the questions I pose to the legislature. 
If the $200,000 study was, in essence, done as a line of defense for the overall public interest, how can we not then logically proceed with an equally independent legal defense of that interest? <laughs> Particularly when the conclusions reached by the study have convincingly justified its cost. And if we choose not to proceed, what does that say about our willingness to defend the interest of all of Orange County citizens? And wouldn't that make every dime the taxpayers spent on that study essentially meaningless? With the potentially historic countywide impact of annexation staring us in the face, ambiguity, indifference to facts and independent expert opinions, and a continued lack of transparency are things we simply cannot tolerate and must defend ourselves against. It's up to each of you to defend the overall public interest of this county, and I trust that you will. Thank you for your time. until Thursday at 4 o'clock in this assembly meeting room. Motion? Is there a second? All in favor? Opposed? Carried.